Hey y'all! Welcome to today's episode of Foreign and By. Now, you heard me mention yesterday that it was Media Monday, and today we're doing a segment called Tickle Me Tuesday. And Tuesday is all about things that tickle my fancy. So, as it is February, and February is Black History Month, um, today I actually decided to read a few poems from black poets. And next Tuesday we may have something different, something special. Check back every Tuesday for Tickle Me Tuesday and just see what's going on. So I'm just going to go ahead and get right started. <laughs> right started. And the first poem comes from a woman called Phyllis Wheatley. And I say called because that wasn't her birth name. But as is the custom, she was given a name when she was brought to America as a slave. And then Wheatley was the family surname of the family that bought her. Now she was, you know, they say she was born probably around the Senegal area. And it was about, oh, sorry, 19, about 1753 or 1754 or something like that. Um, but basically, you know, the family that bought her was so amazed at just how quick she could learn and she was so smart. And because they just amazed them so much, they started teaching her. They taught her English, they taught her Latin, ancient history, mythology, literature. I mean, the girl was like a, a, a sponge and she was, you know, just really smart. And she actually wrote a poem called On Imagination when she was about 19 years old. And she was a published author. And not published under someone else's name, but published under her own name. And this was in the 1700s, mind you. She died in 1784 at just 31 years old. So you can imagine, or about 31, 31, 32. So you can imagine how much of an accomplishment that is. But On Imagination is a long and beautiful poem. And because it is long, I'm only going to read a stanza of it. But I just want you to close your eyes and listen to my voice and just think about the fact that this came from a 19 year old slave in the 1700s. So, On Imagination by Phyllis Wheatley. Imagination, who can sing thy force? Or who describe the swiftness of thy course? Soaring through air to find the bright abode, thy imperial palace of the thundering God, we on thy pinions can surpass the wind and leave the rolling universe behind. From star to star the mental optics grow, measure the skies and range the realms above. There in one view we grasp the mighty whole, or with new worlds amaze the unbounded soul. Even reading it, I just felt a chill. I mean, it's just beautiful. And really, if you think about it, I mean, I know I, I cherish my imagination and I cherish, I mean, I hope I'm creative. <laughs> and I cherish it, okay, let me tell you. I cherish the thought that I am creative. And I think that an imagination is just a beautiful thing and it's something that all of us need to exercise. And she just put it so beautifully, the places that it can take you are um, astounding. So I'm going to read another poem and this one is shorter so I'm going to read the whole thing. And this is from a man named Forrest Hamer. He's still alive so hi Mr. Hamer. I th hope it's Hamer. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Uh, he was born in 1956. He lives in California, Oakland, California. And um, he has authored four poetry collect or three poetry collections. And really, this poem, I chose it mainly because um, it's a poem titled Grace, and it's about his mother, or the poet's, you know, the, the poem is about a mother named Grace. <laughs> and I chose it because I thought that it was special. There's a family member of my own who is important to me, and I never got a chance to meet her, and her name is Grace. And this poem made me think of her, so, and it's... It's in memory of her. It's dedicated to those people who did know her and those who did love her. So here's Grace by Mr. Forrest Hamer. The air is flooded with her. I am a boy again, and my mother and I lie on wet grass, laughing. She startles, turns to marigolds at my side, saying beautiful, and I can see the red there is in them. When she would fall into her thoughts, We'd look for what distracted her from us. My mother's gone again, as suddenly as ever. And seven months after the funeral, I go dancing. 
I am becoming grateful. Breathing, thinking, marigolds. Okay. <laughs> I think that's really nice. And I think that anytime we can leave an impression on someone and touch someone in any kind of way, that's that's a relationship to be treasured. So that is what tickled my fancy today. You can see the bright sunshine blooming and glowing on my face and it's just illuminating me and this is the reason that people wear makeup but I have made a conscious choice not to wear makeup and I did that for a reason because I think that we all need to treasure the beauty that was provided for us naturally so here I am naturally in the beauty of the sun and so what you guys know that my cheek doesn't really look like this so what difference does it make if for a moment I'm lit on fire on the side <laughs> and that is all you guys make sure you tune in tomorrow for one to know Wednesday because I have got something I think you do want to know about that was for you <laughs> so y'all have a good evening until next time I wish you love I wish you peace and I wish you art Ella I can't control the feeling